guys, give me a few seconds. I'm gonna do the audio thingy on my laptop and then we can get started, all right? Let's do this. What's up everyone? Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel slash my podcast. I am the Marketing Nomad. My name is Prithvi Madhukar. I am the author of Zero to Four Figures and Self Loved. I'm also a digital entrepreneur and a business owner. A few of the roles that I do take on, I'm a YouTuber, podcaster, Etsy shop owner, and Skillshare teacher as well. All of the links are in the description box below if you'd like to check it out. Welcome to episode 186 of the Ask TMN series where we're going to be getting into 10 productivity hacks that I have for busy entrepreneurs slash solopreneurs out there. Now, if you're new here and you're wondering, well, what's this Ask TMN thing that you just spoke about? So Ask TMN is a series that I created where I answer some of the most commonly asked questions that solopreneurs may have about marketing, business, as well as mindset. Now, if those topics interest you, definitely do hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell because that that tells you every single time I upload a patio podcast and video and I do upload a couple of these every single week other than that once you're done watching this video and it has helped you in some way please do give me a thumbs up that really helps me it helps my channel it helps me help other solopreneurs with their marketing business and mindset and just basically help them grow the business that they love Alrighty guys, let's get into the 10 productivity hacks that I do have for you. Now the first one is very, very basic and <laughs> in particular it is for somebody like me. It really, really matches my personality and that is to make sure that there are minimum distractions around you when you are working. Now, I am someone who gets distracted like this and I'm just snapping my fingers because it is that quick for me to get distracted. And so every single time I am at my desk, there is usually just whatever it is that I have to focus on, just those items that are out on the table. Like for example, I have a book for scripting. I also have a book uh, to manage my daily life. I've also got another book where I write down my thoughts. And so when I'm working on scripting, all of those other stuff, yeah, they're packed away. They're not on my desk because the thing is, if I see it, then, you know, that starts another line of thought. I end up going in that direction and I forget whatever it is that I have to do or I abandon whatever it is that I have to do. So for me, when it comes to working, there are minimum distractions around me. If I'm working on one particular item, I just have the items that I need for that particular item. And that also goes for the tabs on my laptop as well if i'm working on something very specific there are no other tabs open related to any other items or any other areas of my business so i think having minimum distractions is just one way where i get into that hyper focus mode and i'm just minimizing the chance of me you know just finding something else to do and abandoning whatever i have at hand so that is number one for you number two is i have mini routines and let me tell you this works so well so let me explain what i mean by this of course you've probably heard of having a morning routine and having an evening routine having a night routine but what i mean when i say mini routine with respect to your business is try to have a process for every single thing that you do trust me it actually reduces your mental load when you have to figure out what you have to do and let me give you an example for example it's me shooting my youtube video i actually do have a routine whether it is uh making sure that my microphone is on my uh tripod stand for my phone, my tripod stand for my camera, everything. Like I actually have a process of how I get ready for my video shoots. I also have a process for when I have to pack up everything and I have to download the video. I have to make my edits. I have to upload. I have to create the thumbnail. I have to post it on my social media platforms, so on and so forth. I have mini routines for every single thing that I do for my business. And that's how I take a look at it as well if there is some task that i do repetitively i try to make sure that i am clear about the items on that task list for that particular repetitive item and i make sure it becomes a routine it becomes something that i just do very very subconsciously so that 
I'm actually taking the mental load off of thinking, okay, what do I do next? What do I have to do? So on and so forth. And that really, really frees up a lot of my brain space to think about other things that, you know, maybe come up randomly and I have to focus on what I have to do for that. So have mini routines. Approach your business as a way to figure out mini routines. So one question that I personally find myself asking all the time is, all right, how can I make this a process? How can I make this a very, very subconscious process that, you know, just basically automate myself and just go on, you know, uh, I guess I would say like a robot, you know, okay, this is what I have to do for my YouTube shoot. This is an everyday thing for me. I'm just going to uh, have the process set in my head. It's become a routine and I just do that once and for all. So approach your business in the form of mini routines, especially the tasks that you have to do on uh, maybe a daily basis or a weekly basis, something that is repetitive, figure out what are the list of items that you have to do in that task, make it as a routine, pretend that it is a process that you want to make it as a habit and then work in that format. It's pretty much the same as you would do for a morning routine or an evening routine or a night routine, but I'm saying apply that concept for your business as well and have mini routines for uh, repetitive tasks that you do have. Saves a lot of time, saves a lot of your brain space as well, okay? Highly recommend this, like 1000%, highly recommend this, all right? So that was number two for you. Number three is segment your day. And this is something that I personally do as well, even in my thought process. I always think of my day as morning, afternoon, evening. And so whatever tasks I have on my list, it's usually like, I kind of segregate it like, okay, I'm gonna do this in the morning, I'm gonna do this in the afternoon, I'm gonna do this in the evening, like post-workout and so on and so forth. So there is already that segregation, that segmentation in my mind when it comes to one single day, because when you are a solopreneur, yeah, 24 hours is gonna just slip by you, just slip by. But when you segment your day into three different sections or however you wish to do it, maybe you wanna do it in four hour segments or six hour segments, however you wish to do it, make sure that you are segmenting your day and uh, putting in your items depending on which section of the day you want to get to. So I found that it helps because I'm not looking at it now as one whole day. I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it, wow, struggled with that a little bit. Um, but I'm looking at it as three different sections in that particular day and all I have to do is, all right, slot uh, maybe task one morning, task two evening. And another thing that this helps with is mental time blocking. So you're kind of segregating your day already into three different sections and you're putting in tasks. So in a way, that's a different kind of time block that you're mentally do doing. If in case, you know, time blocking is a little bit too detailed for you, this is another way that you can work it out, all right? So that is number three for you. Number four is to track your time. And I highly, highly recommend it. I personally do it on Google Calendar, but in the past, I've also just had a simple notebook and just written down what I'm doing in each part of the day. Now, it's very, very simple. It's just plain old when you step away from the task that you're doing on hand, just write the time. That's it. It's just as simple as that. And the reason why it's so important to track your time is because time flies. All right, that is the universal truth about time. And the thing is, especially when you are a solopreneur, yeah, there are no quarterly reviews or you know yearly reviews to tell you how you're doing or whether you've done enough work, whether you've not done enough work, so on and so forth. It's all on you. And so when that's the case, it helps to understand what exactly you are doing at what point in the day. And that itself becomes a way for you to analyze yourself and analyze which are the areas that you need to improve on, which are the areas that you need to continue, and also which are the areas that you need to remove completely from your schedule. And one thing that I've understood with time tracking, and I've been doing this for quite some time now, and it is, I gotta say, game changer. 
absolute game changer when it comes to productivity is because one, subconsciously you start looking at the time more, you start being cognizant of whatever it is that you are doing in that moment of time and how much it takes. And number two, it really, really helps with your planning because the more you track your time, the more you can understand, all right, well, there is a pattern of me taking one and a half hours to shoot my YouTube videos. There is a pattern of me taking maybe one hour to do my uh, monthly review for that particular weekend. And so when you figure out that pattern of time that you are taking, yeah, it becomes that much more easier for you to plan because now you know how much time needs to be allocated for each of the items that you've mentioned. So I highly recommend it. And the third thing is it just helps you be a little bit more self-aware and it helps you understand yourself as a person. Like, for example, if you are just tracking time without the analysis and you figure out that, all right, well, I actually did 30 minutes of this and then I felt like going for a walk and then I was distracted for 30 minutes and then I came back and then I worked for like three hours and then I decided that I just wanted to maybe do some yoga. Like even just tracking that and understanding, all right, well, maybe this is because I'm somebody, like I like uh, like hyper-focused work, but I also like to take 30 minutes off every couple of hours, so on and so forth. So it, again, helps you with planning because it helps you understand yourself a lot better. So that was number four for you. Just answering the very simple question of how are you spending your day? What exactly are you doing? How much time is it taking? Then we come to number five, which is batch similar tasks. Now, the reason why this works so well is because when you start a task, yeah, it happens on a very subconscious level. Your mind is starting to get adjusted to whatever it is that you are doing in that moment. That's where the flow state comes in. And so when you batch similar tasks together, you are not giving your mind the opportunity to uh you know shift focus or redirect itself or i guess yeah it, it's a whole different process on its own i'm not going to get into that but basically when you are working on one similar bunch of tasks you are getting yourself in the flow state where your mind kind of gets into that autopilot of knowing what to do and it just keeps doing and time flies that way. So for me, the way that I like to do it is if it's similar tasks like scripting, maybe for scripting for YouTube, scripting for my Instagram and maybe a blog post. Yeah, I would, I would do all of them together just because they have the baseline of how my brain should work according to that. So it helps if you batch similar tasks together and slot those into the segments of the day that you decide to. So batching content, batching your work, batching similar tasks, really really works all right because you're in that flow state you might as well figure out how to complete the set of tasks that are similar rather than getting your brain out of that and then into another process and getting comfortable with that process so on and so forth so yeah plain and simple batching really really good productivity hack then we come to number six and that is make time and give space to brain dump this is so so important especially for someone like me where my mind is running with a million things at every given point there are so many things that i have to do so many things that i want to do and so many ideas that come to me at every single given point so what I personally do is every couple of pages in my planner, I have a brain dump page where it's just for me to brain dump whatever is on my mind. And that actually clears out a lot of mental space as well, because whatever is in my mind now, I don't have to focus on remembering it, which honestly, <laughs> I never do. I always forget. And so for me, I'm kind of removing that um, necessity to focus on remembering things because now it's on paper and I just have to refer to it every other given point. I also would recommend brain dumping your to-do list. Just write down every single thing you have to do for that time period. Like for example, if, if it's for the week or the month and then start to um, give the dates and the segment of the day that you want to. Trust me, that's a method that's worked so well for me because now I just have a brain dump page and I just write everything and then I just tell, okay, I'm gonna do this on Monday, Tuesday, Friday, so on and so forth. And again, reduces a lot of mental space, increases your productivity because everything's on paper, okay? So that is number six for you. Number seven is set rules for yourself. This is so, so important. You are a solopreneur. You are a one-man team. There is nobody looking over your shoulder. There's nobody telling you what to do. So you've got to tell yourself what to do. And something that I've understood is setting rules for yourself 
Yeah, I've had um, a pretty, <laughs> pretty difficult relationship when it comes to discipline because honestly, while growing up, I think the way that I perceived discipline was that it was restricting me, it was suffocating me, and of course today my relationship with discipline is a lot better, I guess I would say. It's still not at the optimal levels, but it is definitely better. But one thing I've understood is when you set rules for yourself, you are not suffocating yourself, you're not restricting yourself, you're actually freeing up the mental space for you to uh, think about what to do and how to go about life and how to show up. You are setting rules for yourself so you kind of go on autopilot saying, okay, well, beyond 6 p.m. I can't work. So that's something that you don't have to give too much mental space on. And the way that I see it, productivity, the more you can free up your mental space, trust me, the, the higher your productivity level goes. I don't know how, and I'm not seeing this anywhere, but I really think there is a connection between that because the more relaxed I've been about my life, the more autopilot I've gone in certain areas of my life, the more I've understood that my productivity increases in other areas of my life as well as in the areas that I'm talking about. So, you know, try as much as possible to set rules for yourself, you know, keep certain restrictions on yourself, the way that you're showing up. And uh, that also would help like maybe even taking five minutes of break every hour, keep that as a rule for yourself. Or if you're somebody who likes taking 15 minutes every two hours, keep that as a rule for yourself and make sure that even if you know there might be things in your plan that you might not get around to, at least you're sticking to the bottom line rules that you have for yourself showing up. That also helps with your mental health and your emotional health as well. All right, so that is number seven for you. Number eight is mix and match. Now, I love this, okay, because for me, I gotta tell you, I was actually talking about this to a very dear friend of mine very recently, actually. So the way that she was saying is, you know, Prit, it's kind of like in school where we had this timetable, we, you know, we had subjects that we didn't like, we had subjects that we liked, we were forced to go through two hours of uh, subject X because we didn't like it on Wednesdays. And I said, you know, I was actually talking about this with my mom as well. Yes, we do have a timetable as solopreneurs. Yes, of course, we do have a timetable. But I think that we are looking at it a little bit differently or we have to look at it a little bit differently. The fact is that we get to decide what we want our timetable to be. You know, we are not today. I'm not forced to go through two hours of a subject that I hated back then. I can actually shuffle things around and make it so that I am doing the tasks that I love as well as I'm loving to do the tasks that I don't like to do as well. And you've got that freedom as a solopreneur. I think this is one of the best things about entrepreneurship. And this is why I love this journey so much as in one of the many many reasons but it is a very very big part of it you get to set your timetable and so for me the way that i deal with the tasks that i don't like because well in a business yes there are going to be tasks that you like there are going to be tasks that you you know don't like so on and so forth there's going to be like a multitude of things right so the way that i see it is i mix and match after doing the task that i don't like i always 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 follow it up with a task that i do like and so that kind of balances it out for me so for me I kind of see doing the task that I love as a reward for the task that I don't like. And so I personally like to mix and match it that way so that I'm not at a given point in time only doing the tasks that I don't like. I am also in between pumping up my passion and my motivation and my dedication with tasks that I do love and uh, you know are the reason why uh, I'm, I show up every single day. And one thing that I gotta say is a huge chunk of what you do as a solopreneur is going to be very fulfilling and you are going to be passionate about. And along with that territory, I think it's it's a trade-off, you know? There are going to be some things that you have to do that you don't like as well. So when I see it as a trade-off and the fact that in my entire schedule, my business, there are significantly, significantly more tasks that I'm doing that I love, 
I would call that a win, all right? So shifting your mindset a little bit in that direction also helps you show up in a way where you don't feel resentful of the tasks that you don't like because it's a trade-off. One, you're getting the freedom to choose how you want to uh, decide on your life, basically, even if it is your professional life, there's a lot of freedom and independence that comes along with this journey. So think of it as a trade-off, but at the same time, work smart. Do a mix and match, you know, so that you're not being constantly in that frustration bubble of, all right, these are the tasks that I don't like. No, mix it up a little bit, okay? You have the freedom. This is the journey that you've picked, you know? Make use of that. Take advantage of the freedom that you have to decide on how you want to show up and how you want to schedule things out in your day, right? So that is number eight for you. Number nine is very very important and honestly took me two years of my entrepreneurial journey to figure it out you've got to celebrate your achievements you've got to recognize your achievements you've got to celebrate your achievements this is so so important it's very 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 easy to get into the autopilot and just keep working towards the next goal the next goal the next goal the next goal very soon you're not going to A, feel that you've made any progress in your business because you've not recognized the achievements, the goals that you have passed, you've just kept looking forward. And number two, it really does affect your mental health because when you keep doing things that you feel are not leading to anything naturally, naturally your mindset does take a hit, the way that you show up does take a hit, the passion that you have does take a hit. And so one thing that I've understood is if you want to increase your productivity, it's important for you to recognize your the milestones that you have crossed. It's important for you to celebrate because every time you are working towards a task, all right, there is drain of energy, right? And so when you do take the time to recognize and celebrate your achievements, you're kind of bringing back the energy to go on to the next set of tasks, to move forward to the next goal. And that's the, the encouragement and the energy that you do need. It's very, very important to keep you going. And when that energy you know drains out naturally your productivity decreases as well so for me the way that i see it is you know how uh, you get these sudden boosters when you're playing a video game or any sort of game i don't know i think it's video games yeah it's only video games if i'm not wrong but you kind of get these boosters right you walk through and then they uh you walk through maybe you get like a cherry or something and then it suddenly gives you more points and you feel more energized yeah for me the way that i see it is celebrating your milestones your achievements is basically these boosters like it's just plain old simple that it gives you that energy boost to make sure that you are keeping your productivity at an optimal level. It might not seem like it is related, but trust me, there's a big connection between productivity and the mindset that you're in, the energy that you do have, the passion that you do have, and as much as possible, you've gotta make sure that you are doing your best to keep it at uh, high levels of passion, dedication, and even just interest in what you are doing. And how do you do that? You do that by recognizing how far you've come. You do that by recognizing and celebrating the milestones that you have crossed, the goals that you've hit, and not just you know the tangible ones, even the intangible ones as well, all right? Very, very important. This was such a big lesson for me, especially with my entrepreneurial journey. So that was number nine for you. Then we come to number 10. Biggest productivity hack, I gotta tell you, is it's okay for you to take breaks when you want to, all right? Especially when it comes to this entrepreneurial journey, we put this unnecessary weight on us to keep working 24 seven. And I get it. I mean, I am an entrepreneur myself. I get it, you know, the amount of risk we've taken and the fear associated with, you know, whether we can sustain our business to the next month and so on and so forth. Yes, it's pretty big, it's massive, but at the same time, if you keep going on without allowing yourself to take a break whenever you want to or whenever you need to, again, it boils down to burning out. And burning out is the quickest way to 
to lose your productivity is the quickest way to see that productivity slump coming into your life. So to avoid that burnout, it's very, very important for you to take regular breaks. And just honestly, I want to tell you, it's okay to take a break whenever you want to. If for some reason you're showing up today, and I had a conversation about this recently with a dear friend of mine as well. If you're showing up today and you just don't feel like working, one, there's probably an underlying reason for that. You're probably um, on the verge of a burnout. Whatever it is that you feel like doing in that moment, make sure that you are enjoying it. Make sure that you are staying present when you are taking a break don't think about work when you're working don't think about taking a break and honestly if those two clash that's a big sign of a burnout and that's also a big warning sign that you are going to be very naturally getting into a productivity slump and so how do you get out of it make sure that every single time you want to take a break you're telling yourself it's okay for me to take a break at this moment in time it's okay for me to take a breather that's so so important and and when you need it, take it. When you want it, also take it, all right? Make sure that it is a part of you showing up. Understand that for your productivity to be at maximum levels, you need that time to recuperate. You need that time to build your energy back up. And it could be five minutes every two hours. It could be 10 minutes every... Um, you know, a couple of hours, it could even be a 30 minute break that you take every half day, whatever works for you. Understand that if your mind wants a break, there's more likely a hidden reason behind it. Give it to it. Don't uh, penalize your mind for wanting a break or needing a break. That's very, very crucial because taking a break and productivity, yeah, they're so, so interlinked. And, you know, if you don't take a break, you're forcing yourself to work even though you're not at maximum productivity le uh, levels. And the way that I see it, the smartest way to go about this is to give yourself time to get back the energy, to come back to your maximum productivity level rather than forcing yourself to work in, an, an, in a mindset or in the mental capacity where you are not there yet, you know, and you need that rest. So understand that it's it's crucial to take breaks when you need to, as well as when you want to, all right? And so that brings me to all the 10 that I do have for you. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscription button. Oh, I always mess this part. I don't know why. It's like, I say it right in the beginning and then the second part, I'm just like, I have no idea how to go about it. <laughs> so what I do want to say is, you know, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscription bell, hit that notification bell. No, I, did, I messed it up again, didn't I? Okay, wait, we're gonna do this again. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Yes, yeah, subscribe button. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing that I keep messing up. And then the notification bell, because that tells you every single time I do upload. <laughs> A party of wow, I'm gonna give myself a clap because this was definitely something that I struggled with thrice today. Okay, anyway, uh, if you want to catch my two books, they are available on Amazon Zero to Four Figures Lessons Learned by a Broke CEO, and then there is Self Loved 1000 Journal Prompts for Healing, Growth, and Self Discovery. I've also got a bunch of productivity planners available on Amazon at the moment of publishing. There are 18 of them available. The simplest way to find all of my stuff on Amazon and to figure out what they're all about and details about it is to search my full name on Amazon. You will get an author page for me. My full name is P-R-I-T-H-V-I -I space M-A-D-H-U-K-A-R Prithvi Madhukar. Once you do that, you'll get an author page and everything just shows up. My books, my planners, my journals, my trackers. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for, wow, whoops, I just, um, yeah, that happens. I feel like I should do a count of how many times I end up touching my mic when I'm shooting a patio. I feel like I do it at least five to six times. I have no idea, but that's probably gonna be a project that I do someday. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for listening all the way up until here. I'll catch you in my next patio. Bye-bye.